How's it going, guys? It is 2.54 a.m., 11th of May. Here in Japan, we have a medium to difficult question for step one heme internal medicine 2CK. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram, melman underscore medical. I'm HLMan underscore medical. Links down below. Follow me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. Let's start the clip. Two-year-old boy, he has increasing lethargy jaundice over the past two weeks. At birth, he had pathologic jaundice treated with phototherapy. Made many clips on pathologic jaundice, long fucking discussion, not going to get into it right now. His father had a splenectomy as a child, important detail here, as I'll talk about as we move through the question. Two on six systolic ejection murmur is auscultated. Hemoglobin 9 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 in males and non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 menstruating women. White blood cells normal, 7,000 should be 4 to 11,000. Platelets normal, 200,000 should be 150 to 450,000. Reticulous site count, super fucking elevated, 9% should be 0.5 to 2.5%. Total bilirubin increase, 4 milligrams per deciliter, should be 1 milligram per deciliter. Coombs test is negative, which means we do not have antibodies against RBCs. Question wants to know which of the following most likely we see this patient, so let's just hop to the answer choice here. Should I say antibodies against RH antigen? Wrong fucking answer. We know it's instantaneously wrong because we have a negative Coombs test here. Okay, so a Coombs test just means we have antibodies of some kind against RBCs. Now we can do a long fucking discussion about the whole... RH mechanism, RH uh, negative mom, RH positive fetus, etc., and how antibodies can cross placenta in a second pregnancy onward if there's been a mixing of circulations in the first pregnancy, OMG. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Show is B, bicuspid aortic valve, wrong fucking answer. No. Okay, I was a flagrant asshole. Some of you see the two on six systolic ejection murmur. You say, what's that about? This is just a flow murmur in pediatrics. Hemoglobin's low. So if hemoglobin's low, oxygen delivery is low, heart rate's going to go up to compensate. Flow murmurs, just across the pulmonic and aortic valves, ultra fucking common in pediatrics. You see these all over the place. And students think there's some sort of valvular abnormality. There's not, okay? You can also get these in pregnancy, all right, when you have increased plasma volume by 50% by second trimester. So infections in pediatrics in particular, if you where heart rate can go up, or if you have uh, anemia, any low oxygen delivery state, um, where heart rate will jack up to compensate, you get a flow murmur. Okay, so we do not have bicuspid aortic valve here. And another quick point I'm going to make is that bicuspid aortic valve can absolutely present with aortic stenosis early in life in pediatrics. Okay, it need not be a case where you're starting to be in your 40s and the valve has started to calcify. Students erroneously think you have to be an adult with calcification for an aortic stenosis to become clinical with bicuspid valve. It's fucking wrong, okay? So bicuspid valve, not always Turner syndrome. It's usually autosomal dominant familial. You could see it in young boys as an example. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased lymphoblast, wrong fucking answer. So ALL, okay, so our white blood cells are normal. So if we had a white blood cell count greater than around 30,000 or so is when you start to really think about leukemia. Of course, it doesn't have to be that high. I'm just telling you for the sake of USMLE questions. So greater than 30-ish thousand, and it's all lymphocytes, okay? So they say 90% lymphocytes, uh, white blood cell counts 50,000. You got to think in a kid that that's going to be ALL. It can sometimes be pertussis. Okay, so uh, pertussis can present with high lymphocyte ratio. So they'll tell you 90% lymphocytes, uh, super elevated leukocyte account sounds like ALL, but they'll say that there's a cough and that there can be post-tussive emesis, vomiting after the cough and hypoglycemia. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D. Actually, real quick, I want to mention that in pediatrics, you need to know that there's increased risk of ALL, notably in Down syndrome. Okay, so that will show up. They'll just give you easy vignette of Down syndrome, and they'll say, what's most likely to be seen in this patient? Answer, increased lymphoblasts. Okay, so I, uh, I like the idea of that question, actually. I've seen it on the NBMEs, and I'll, by all means, I'll make a future uh, MCQ here on the YouTube on it. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, 
normal chromic, normal acidic anemia, seemingly vague answer choice, correct answer. Okay, now, not my opinion. This is on one of the new NBME questions, actually, where they give you a diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis, and they want you to know that you have a normal chromic normocytic anemia. They give you all different types of anemias as the answers. Microcytic, macrocytic, hypochromic, hyperchromic, and the answer is normal chromic normocytic anemia. You think it's nitpicky? Think it's weird? Don't take it up to me. Take it up to the NBME exam. So I'll mention that Autosomal dominant hereditary serocytosis, obviously heterozygosity and anchor and spectrum band proteins, and it's going to be a cytoscolial defect as a result. They love giving you splenectomy in one of the parents. It's AD, as I said. So they'll tell you that had history of splenectomy. They like that. So you're going to get increased clearance of the spherocytes by the spleen, and that's going to increase the risk for pigment cholithiasis. Okay, so these patients will get gallstones, pigment stones calcium bilirubinate stones, okay? And in order to decrease the risk of cholithiasis, they often do splenectomy in patients with hereditary serocytosis. It can even show up on the real USMLA. They'll give you an easy vignette of hereditary serocytosis. They'll say, uh, what should be done for management on 2CK, for example? And the answer will just be splenectomy and cholecystectomy together is one answer, okay? It sounds very hardcore and invasive, but it's shown up, all right? So splenectomy is often done as treatment. You're gonna have a negative Coombs test because there's no antibodies against RBCs. Now I've made plenty of clips here on the YouTube how you can get spherocytes in drug or infection-induced hemolysis. However, you're gonna have a positive Coombs test. So they tell you 12-year-old was recent, recently received a drug or recently had a viral infection. There's spherocytes on a smear. Coombs test is pos positive. Answer autoimmune hemolytic anemia, wrong fucking answer, hereditary serocytosis. Now, as I already talked about before, we have a flow murmur just from the increased heart rate because hemoglobin's down. And we have increased reticulocytes because our hemoglobin is low. Okay, so what you need to know about reticulocytes, because this can be confusing, these are not tied to any one specific condition. So if you go searching on the internet for low versus high causes of reticulocytes, you'll actually see that reticulocytes can be low in hereditary serocytosis, some sources say. I've seen high reticulocyte count in numerous hereditary serocytosis questions on USMLE. I've come to see that it's just if hemoglobin's low, then reticulocytes are jacked up to compensate in some cases. It's not dramatic, okay? Bilirubin's high just because we have increased uh, unconjugated bilirubin from turnover within the spleen, as we already talked about. So uh, lastly, Stone's cholesterol, wrong fucking answer, as I already mentioned, you can get uh, calcium bilirubinate pigment stones from uh, high, high unconjugated bilirubin in uh, hereditary serocytosis, but not cholesterol stones. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, Nick, too. You make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.